Welcome to Horror Side. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you don't miss our creepiest stories every day. Let's begin. So, I croaked, ignoring her wince at my raspy voice. You're worried that your dead husband is haunting you when you fuck other men? I inhaled a long drag of the cigarette, then took care to blow the smoke just far enough from her face to avoid being rude. She didn't flinch, which meant she thought I had a lot to offer. Pretty little thing she was, nearly 30 years old, though I'd estimate the age of her modified chest to be about three. Her good looks stemmed mainly from the fact that she'd clearly avoided a lifetime of hard work. I probably would have been equally attractive 25 years ago, had my twin passions been vanity and stupidity, this gal was taken care of. Her expression glazed for just a moment. I noticed. No, she offered timidly. It's nothing like that. She looked up at me with wide eyes that had been conditioned to elicit sympathy. I noticed. It's just... She bit her lip. It's just that Raymond's been gone a month. But I don't think that he's... Gone, gone, you know. I want to know if I should put him behind me or... She shed a tear. It started out small. His favorite sweater would be hanging in the closet. But the next morning, it was lying on the bedroom floor. Not a big deal, you know. She looked around conspiratorially, despite the fact that no one was in the brightly lit sun porch besides the two of us. As if sensing my thought... Sophocles rubbed against my skirt. I reached down and scratched his ear without turning away from my client. She stared right back at me, looking over the swirling vapor dancing from the teapot spout. But then, she breathed, flushing slightly pink, I would be uh, in an intimate moment. Masturbating or fucking? I asked bluntly. Her pink face quickly turned crimson. Um, the first one. I'd hear a sudden banging on my bedroom door. It would go away whenever I stopped what I was doing. What makes you think it's your dead husband? I pressed her, crushing my cigarette and lighting a new one. She gazed down at the table. He would always interrupt me, even if it wasn't about anything naughty. She looked up at me in desperation. It just feels like him. Does that make any sense? She bit her lip again. I noticed. But the worst thing was last night. That's what made me decide that it was time to talk with a professional. God, her little pauses and cute blushing were irritating. I really wanted to slap her. Explain, I ordered cavalierly before taking in that first drag. The long pull of the cigarette really makes people like her worth it. What was her name? Cindy. She seemed like a Cindy. But the Cindy's of the world always scatter from my mind for just a few seconds during that first sensual puff. In those moments, I feel so capable. Last night, I coughed. Reality set back in. Listen, Cindy. It's Anne Samantha. You must have jilled off thousands of times in your life. I I'm sorry, jilled? Well, are you a jack from the waist down? She laid a dainty little hand right on her mouth. Oh, my no. I'm all Jill, I suppose. I grunted. So what's so different about Jilling off now? Her eyes got wide again. But I had learned long ago to suppress the slap urge. When I'm alone in bed, I hear breathing. Only when I'm alone. It's unmistakable. Well, how hard are you working? I asked pointedly. She dropped the hand from her face. The breathing is coming from the other side of the room. I gave her an unblinking, fixed stare. She returned it. I finally turned away when a lump of ash fell from my cigarette onto the table. Here, I offered, pouring a cup of tea from the pot. I rested my hand on the painted grapefruit and lavender design to hold it steady. Drink this. She took it obediently, blew on it, and then took a sip and winced. Too hot? I asked sharply. Too bitter, she responded coolly. Too bad, 
I finished. Drink the whole cup if you want to see what's on the other side. She sipped as I spoke. You've told me that Raymond's been gone a month. You're broken hearted, but you can't move on if he's still here. The shock was terrible, wasn't it? A hit and run while he was crossing the street right in front of your own home. The worst moments of your life were spreading through the house, knowing what was outside before you saw it. The hope was the worst, because you knew that your husband's broken body would be lying in the street. But the smallest part of you hoped that it wasn't true, and that hope made it hurt so much more. You found him in a gory heap just beyond your front yard, and the future you'd imagined drained away like blood through your fingers. And it was in that exact moment, kneeling in the middle of the street at 7.13 p.m., that you realized your life had been permanently changed to a different path of someone else's choosing. I took an aggressive puff of the cigarette and pressed forward. The sun set while you held his already cooling hand, and you realized that this would be the first sunset you'd spend knowing he was dead, and that you would end every day with this thought on your mind from now on. She blanched. I never told you that it was at sunset. I never even said that it was a car accident. I narrowed my eyes at her. The guilt was more than you expected because part of you had actually cared about Raymond. Yes, he was old and boring. My God, you would never let him forget it. But he'd felt just so fucking fragile when you crushed his spine with the car that the anger didn't seem to make sense in the moment. I blew smoke through my nostrils. He knew it was you, Cindy. You pulled the car into the driveway and rinsed off the blood so fast that no one even thought to check it for evidence. But he knew. And as he lay dying, unable to speak through the shattered lungs, he stared at you without hate, malice, or vengeance. It was simply confusion, Cindy. Raymond never considered that you did it for the cash. His dying thought was wondering how he'd somehow been a bad husband, and he felt guilty for not knowing why. Her eyes were shimmering with tears that I believed were genuine, but I didn't give a shit. Her cup of tea was empty. I was so careful, she whispered in a pitch that was just below the only dogs can hear it threshold. I rolled my eyes. No, you aren't, sweetie. People are just stupid, and that's the only reason you've gotten away with everything so far. Really? Putting $619,138 cash in a briefcase is just asking for trouble. Her jaw hung in shock. How could you possibly have known? I blew one last long stream of smoke from the cigarette. If I were in your shoes, sweetie, I'd be much more worried about how much poisonous oleander you just had with your tea. She slammed her hands on the table and grabbed the edges so hard that the empty cup rattled in its saucer. What did you do to me? I pulled a cigarette butt from my lips and quashed it in her empty cup. Make peace with whatever god or devil awaits your heart, I answered flatly. Then I turned to look across the sun porch at the ghost only I could see. Raymond was a disgusting mess. His shattered spine had no hope of holding his torso rigid, so every limp limb flopped at unholy angles. A fountain of black blood oozed from his white lips and nose. His intestines protruded from his stomach like ground beef squeezed between grimy fingers, and the coils hung to the ground like sausage links. He stared at his young widow, or I should say, the one eye that hadn't popped to jelly was staring. I really think that Cindy would have been unnerved if she had known he was there. Instead, she focused on me. How long? When will it start? She asked in utter petrification. In just a second, sweetie, I quipped casually, lighting up another cigarette. Raymond grunted. He wasn't much for talking. What with the lolling tongue dangling impotently where his missing jaw should have been. Oh, and one last thing, sugar. I leaned forward and gently rested my palms on the table. Raymond wants to let you know that dying really 
really fucking hurts. She froze. Behind her, despite lacking a mouth, I could swear that Raymond was smiling. The convulsing started then, but it didn't stop for a long time. Do you have any idea how far mouth foam can spray when a dying woman just won't stop thrashing? I almost felt bad for her when I realized how hard she was trying to cry. That's a really fucking difficult task though, when your throat is closing up. That's when Raymond sauntered over to her jittering body, knelt down, and gently grazed his dead fingertips across her cheek. He looked passionately into her eyes, and for just a moment, I think she looked back. Then, she was gone. The ghost corpse took in the sight for a few moments before I interrupted him with a forced clearing of my throat. <clears throat> he glanced up at me with his lone functioning eye. It was damp. I do appreciate your clear instructions on how to locate the briefcase. If everything is as promised, the bill will be settled. He grunted and waved his limp, floppy arm at the body of his dead wife. Huh? I'll leave her in the backyard of your house. I snuck an oleander plant into the garden during one of my nightly visits. They're not uncommon here in Alabama, and they will explain her accidental death nicely. I wrinkled my nose, and I have to say, I'll be grateful to stop sneaking into your house each night to spook this murderous little witch. Her masturbatory moans made me gag, and I hate crawling through windows. I'm not 50 anymore, you know. I took in a deep breath of nicotine-laced air. He grunted again, dangling his unresponsive arm above the dead woman once more. Hmm? I asked in genuine curiosity as I approached the corpse. Is something more? He shook more eagerly, spraying a fine mist of ghost blood onto the woman's purple face. Oh my, I whispered. I bent down and pried a ring from the woman's rubbery hand. There must have been two dozen diamonds on this. I sang. Then I slipped it onto my middle finger. It fit perfectly. Yes. Thank you very much. I do accept tips for a job well done, you gentlemen, you. This time, I know Raymond was smiling. And I was too. My name is Patricia Barnes, and I'm a hitman for ghosts that only I can see. That's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and to click on the subscribe button below. Turn on notifications so you get informed when we post our amazing, creepy content. We'll see you in the next video.